Okay, gentlemen, getting back to our saga tale there. Like I said, at any time, shit can start going sideways. <laughs> so uh, I'm low on fuel. Like I said yesterday, I only put a splash in, maybe a half gallon, gallon if that. So uh, it's down now. But let's uh, let's fire this baby up and let's keep on heading down. I wanted to change the batteries there on the on the uh, camera. Gentlemen, what goes up must come down. It's called gravity. <laughs> I wish I could just show you how steep this is. Dramatizations on a YouTube cam camera, it does not show... It does not show uh, steepness. Yeah, let the, let the engine brake in low gear. Just be careful not to accidentally throttle it on some of these whoops. I got my foot on the rear brake too, pretty good. Touching it. Take it nice and slow and easy. Uh, my camera angle is fucked up. Let me adjust that so much. I was gonna put on finger gloves, but I realized, man, you can't operate the camera then. I got some nice warm gloves. They're actually uh, gloves that keep your hands dry. Seal skin, seal skin gloves is what they call them. Remember that one trip, trip we went on where it was raining my can? Hands were freezing. That's why you gotta have a pair of those suckers. <laughs> Keep your hands. I, I, I locked up the back tire there, temporarily shut the engine off for a brief second. You gotta be ready to pull the clutch in when you lock up that, if you're, if you're gonna lock that rear. Plenty of places to bump it though, I would think, huh? After, after all, it is all downhill here, gentlemen. Let's drop it back down into low gear. sure plus it's chopped up more this time around a lot more boulders exposed that's a combination of that uh, wet weather it washed this road out washed a lot of the uh, sand away and the rock the rock, boulders are the boulders are what's left there's a turnaround point right there when things start getting too rough for some people that's where they turn around with their jeeps or whatever Yeah, you gotta pay attention, gentlemen, because it does not take too long for shit to start going sideways. Just like my license plate says on my BMW 1000RR. Got my eyes on a nice chop. It's in Florida. This is a different one, not the one I showed you at my uh, YouTube channel, not the red one, this is a blue one, but the dude, the dude is uh, asking 55000 for it. That's a very nice bike, but this dude, he builds them, rides them for a couple years, and then pretends like they're brand new, because he, 
<laughs> he, has, he hasn't, I don't know if he titled it yet. No, he hasn't titled them yet, of course. He's got the MSO. Or he, he probably hasn't even applied for the manufacturer statement of origin yet because he wants to be able to call it new. Does that make sense, gentlemen? He's a dealer, so. It's time to start focusing on the game here, gentlemen. This is a very treacherous area. This whole fucking trail. The trail is treacherous. Anyway, he sells them new, even though we probably used it for two years. No, nope, that's it. He keeps it in mint condition. And it, even if he did use it for two years, I guarantee you there's less than probably 200 miles on the bike. So essentially it is brand new. It's a very nice bike. It's a very nice chopper. But the problem is, there's two problems. First of all, it's 55,000. The second problem is it's in Florida. The third problem is, you gotta pay for it before it's shipped. He ain't gonna ship until it's paid for. And the bottom line is, he's in Florida, and you're here, and you're waiting for your bike. Where the fuck is it? You follow me? You feeling my vibe on this at all? Or Point being, I mean, I'm sure he's an outstanding guy, and he does send the bike and everything, but you can't do it. You've gotta go pick it up. 